they were able to get the government to give them tens of billions, hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars, fresh IOUs, fresh uh, commitments from the U.S. taxpayer to make whole all of the bad bets that they had made that had gone bust. And now that and they that was are globally ensconced behind the, uh, you know, w- with that bailout money, and now that they have manipulated the market over the past couple of months and booked incredible gains through accounting tricks, through manipulating the bank stocks, you know, the bank stocks, uh, when, when the um, Hank Paulson and then Geithner were threatening to implode the system unless they got that bailout money. Yeah, that back in early October. Directly into the pocket of insiders and executives. It never really has filtered out into the general economy at all. Uh, so this is the first leg. The bankers have been taken care of. Now we're getting ready for the second leg. So the second major leg of the belt of the uh, banking meltdown is now getting ready to start uh, over the next, uh, you know, short term. So this is, and we're already seeing it in countries uh, around the world, like in Latvia, for example, which is a client of many of these banks on Wall Street. They are go- undergoing a major currency crisis as we speak. Uh, they are infecting. It's a huge contagion. They're infecting the Swedish banks. Once the Swedish banks now renationalized their banking system, a part of their banking system, they na- they completely nationalized their system back in 1993. That will send the contagion to Western European banks, and of course, then the contagion will come right back to American banks once again. And I predict that by the end of the year, all these banks will go back to Congress and demand another 10, 12, 15 trillion. In additional bailout money, and then uh, this will be really when the total impact of the entire crisis fully hits, because at that point it'll become quite obvious that the the currency, the paper currency that has fueled this fraud for for decades, is truly worthless, and that's when you see uh, this inflation that. I've been talking about and other and other guests on your show. Have been well, Max, talking that about was my well. Max. That was my next question, and let's get into that now. Fourteen point eight trillion, according to Bloomberg, in the first seven months, and we haven't got any new numbers in the last month. Ten trillion in the rest of the world of taxpayer money that we have to pay interest on to give to bankers offshore. Now we're paying in bailout money to move GM to China and to Brazil and Russia. The public doesn't even understand that, along with the pensions going bye-bye, basically. Uh, Obama saying he's going to balance the budget and all this delusional claptrap. And what is this going to do to the currency? you got Geithner getting laughed at. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, well, we talked about the currency situation a couple of days ago. And um, the U.S. dollar, of course, is the world reserve currency. And it has an interesting role in this global meltdown because every time you find that there is a huge, let's say, crisis overseas, there's a knee-jerk reaction where people will buy back into the U.S. dollar temporarily as a safe haven. And then once the smoke clears and they realize that the U.S. is really the biggest basket case of all, the money flows out. Now, over the past... 20 years, and certainly under Bush, one of the ways that the dollar was defended. Hold on, tell us how the dollar was defended in a moment, Max. Gotta go to break, we'll be right back. Okay, Max, I want you to get back into what you were covering there. The economic yeah, expert, um, uh, Max yeah. Kaiser, but, but but hold on. But yeah. before you get back into it, I want to be sure and kind of shift gears in the next segment for listeners to know that I want to talk about the on-the-ground effects of this, what it's going to start looking like on Main Street. It's already bleak out there as this deteriorates and what you politically see in your crystal ball in the future coming out of this, not just in the U.S., but globally. You're in Europe. Go ahead. Well, yeah, getting uh, getting back to what we were saying before the break and what this is going to mean, you know, uh, to the day-to-day reality. During the Bush years, the way that the U.S. was supporting the dollar was they would just, um, you know, invade countries, uh, certainly under uh, when uh, Saddam Hussein started trading his oil in euros. That was one of the, um, the reasons that, you know, shortly thereafter you saw shock and awe and uh, Bush invading Iraq. In, in Iran, uh, 
they also were talking about trading their oil in euros. And, of course, the belligerence toward Iran uh, heated up. And it was interesting that the comments were made in the speech uh, this week by, uh, by Obama. He mentioned that the, the 1953 coup uh, in Iran was in part facilitated by America's CIA, which is something that another one of your guests, John Perkins, the economic hitman, has been talking about in, in, in details in his book. Uh, so it's interesting that these things are coming to light, uh, and it's not on the Alex Jones show, but it's coming from a, a major addresses from the President of the United States. So uh, the things that you've been talking about that have really been in the shadows uh, are now starting to come to light. Now, going forward, since so much is becoming... It's coming to light because of the work of uh, people like yourself. These banks are going to have to rely more on, and more on financial engineering and um, financial fraud, financial skullduggery, and accounting fraud. Uh, just to get back to the, the article I was quoting a moment ago about Citigroup, uh, Citigroup, uh, they reported a 300, uh, they, they got $346 billion of capital from the government. Uh, they went on which accounted for 25% of their quarterly net income uh, thanks to a rule change in, the, in their accounting, and then another $2.7 billion before taxes came from a, an accounting rule that lets the company record income when the value of its own debt fails. Uh, so the company is, is trading with itself. and uh, They're buying their profit. own debt and calling it a profit, like yeah. Treasury and Federal Reserve selling each other debt. This is the snake eating its tail situation. So they're in flames, calling it record profit in delusion with idiots buying the stock in the stock market just as delusional. It's like the arsonist getting paid in charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know, funny. So these guys are trading with themselves. They, so they're ramping up the accounting fraud because... The era of the Bush era, you know, Bush was very simple. You know, he's a very simple program. To defend the dollar, we're going to go invade a country and kill a lot of people. But that era is over. Now we're, going to, we're entering an era of more of this accounting fraud and financial engineering. So the, what that, that means to the people on the street, people in, in their day-to-day -day lives, is that you're going to see more volatility. You're going to see the prices of things on, on various markets around the world Up and down. are going to become more volatile. So the boing, boing, market, boing, boing. I'm sorry? Pogo sticking. Yeah, more of this pogo stick action. So the mark, stock market, bond market, um, precious metal markets, commodity markets, you're going to see a lot more uh, what you would call beta, a lot more volatility, a lot more action, a lot more um, ups and downs, and the, more of a roller coaster ride, which, of course, is is great if you're on the inside, like a Goldman Sachs banker, you know, or someone uh, who's on the inside of Wall Street who knows how to, uh, has experience, and they can profit from this volatility. But for most people, it's scary, and they're on this roller coaster of, of volatility with prices of the markets are going up and down in a hugely exaggerated ways. And that's going to so kill Main Street, to... is it not? That's going to kill Main Street further. Well, yeah, it'll, it'll keep people... It will force people in the lowest possible return investments because they are perceived as safe. But, of course, those investments are, are merely the feeder funds for the big profitable trades that are done on Wall Street. So yeah, so they're going to buy gonna government be, bonds. Quarantined, if you will, their investments are going to be in these, uh, in, you know, making one half of one percent. Meanwhile, inflation will be raging. But they'll be so frightened to put their any capital to work in something that might benefit it from inflation, like precious metals or commodities, because the volatility will be so outrageous. So they're going to be they're going to be cowering in the corner with their half a percent or one percent CD. And meanwhile, the professionals on Wall Street are going to be racking up 20, 30, 40 percent annual gains by gaming the system and taking advantage of this incredible. Because volatility. that's where the money is, is when things are going up and down. Because they're engineering it, they know how to place the bets because the dice are totally loaded long segment coming up with max kaiser and your calls max tell us more about what you see in the future politically when we get back